For the rear diff change, we went ahead and took the tires off because we're going to try to uh, grease these bearings too since we're here. Uh, almost 2,000 miles on it, we wanted to give it a full look about. Uh, brake pads look good on the rear, but we're going to pull these calipers off so we can take the, uh, the hub out, which is connected to the disc brake itself. And once that hub's off, then you can put the grease tool in and grease those bearings. But we'll get to that in a minute. First thing we want to do, and the reason that we're here, a lot of people were asking, and I haven't found a single uh, video on it yet, is the rear trans slash diff change. Um, a lot of confusion. Uh, it is actually all one unit, uh, and this is actually the same unit that's in the X3s. So if you uh, have an X3, um, just follow the same path, basically, and uh, as we're doing here, and uh, you'll be good to go. So on the Defender, we've got this up just about as high as we can go. It is beneficial if you have a lift, but on the Defender, right here in this hole, we have what looks like a 14 or 15 millimeter drain plug. So step one is going to be to get that plug out, drain it all, and then if you come around over to the side here, the yellow cap, and you're going to bear with us because we've got lots of cameras and... and uh, Lots of lights going here, but, uh, away. so right over here, and you're kind of hidden. Um, you can pick it up with the other light. This yellow cap is going to be our fill cap, and according to the uh, book, I think we're right at three quarts to fill the unit back up again. So what we'll do is we'll clean off around this yellow cap a little bit. We'll crack it for a vent, even though I'm pretty sure this is vented one way or another. We want to get this oil out of here. It's kind of cold day. I didn't really want to run it too long because our hands are going to be in here. So we'll crack it a little bit, and then we'll pull this out, we'll drain it, and then uh, we'll get back to you for the fill. Uh, so we'll stick you on uh, speed camera. Thank you. All right, so here we go, we're going to crack the... I don't know if I'll do it. Oh, man. Can't even talk. That's right, they are. We finally got him talking right now that he's got that uh, pretty baby over right. there. <laughs> and look, guys, we got good light for this one. So like I said, well, we got uh, the oil coming down. Well, that wasn't too bad. Oh no! I just dropped that uh, in there. I didn't want to drop. Lynn put something in there. Oh, oh you hate when that. Happens. I hate when you got to do that. <laughs> uh, oh, I just happened to put a rag out here for you, Lynn. Oh. <laughs> Shut up, my glove now. Huh? So, if my calculations are correct, it should be about three quarts. I hope it is. Does that look right for a color for a rear diff? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Pretty yeah, I can't say it's so how I've ever changed differential oil my entire life because no, I've always leased vehicles. That looks really good. And, uh, here, here's your magnet. Oh, yeah. Make sure we don't lose cross washer. But, uh, just your standard. Uh, no, 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 just see, so kind of see it a little metallic y. Yeah, That's your standard break in goo. Pretty standard. Kind of silvery metallic, but you know, there's no chunks, so that's, yeah, that's, that's the, the most important thing. So no it's chunks. just uh, old or new stuff meshing together. Yeah. Getting to know one another. Yeah, we'll just we'll take a better look, but. No. That's standard wear and tear. So. Yeah. Remember, guys, we are at uh, just almost 2,000 miles on this girl. So it's definitely time to do this. Um, sure doesn't look like we uh, released three quarts of oil, does it, to you? No. So that makes me curious. I guess we'll just give it some time. And Uh, 
Uh, well, I guess we'll see. Lightness. Yeah, it's typically about seven pounds. It's about seven Len pounds. I'm gonna give you some pounds, alright. <laughs> alright, so first guys, uh, you know, give it a chance to drain out here. Uh, it was one and a half liters. So a jug and a half. Um, Len's putting the there old capper dewey back in there. And he's gonna wipe the little shrinker off there. And then uh, right now in we're there. gonna go up to the fill side. So I'm going to. Right in the hole there. <laughs> gonna yeah. wipe the rim and everything, you know? If you got some uh, dude wipes, that helps too oh, yeah. to yeah. clean it out. So that's probably the best way, guys, to get yourself a little bit of hose because it is up in there. Um, you know, if you try to do one of the straight ones, I mean, you could put the bed up. And get in there and do it but you're gonna lose some on your way to filling so this is probably gonna be your cleanest uh, way of doing this just push that old girly yeah, under there, right there. there nice and tight so you don't lose nothing and let's very carefully remove our cap Sorry if I'm shaking, it's just a little cold in here. As not to get any dust down in your hole. Don't want dust in the hole. Nope. So then, we will feed that old girl up in there like that, and as you can see, in goes the fluid. As long as Len did his job, Oh, see, this is what I was worried about, guys. Hopping off, yeah. Well, it's cold in here. Yeah. It's, yeah. We might have to turn on the old heater for a second. Seat this baby. We'll get her in there. So we'll just keep going until we get uh, one and a half of these in, and um, then you cap it off. And we'll check your level. So uh, we'll be back with you shortly. Okay, record. And so originally I messed around with little holes and whatnot to get it in there, but really that is the best way, especially if you got it on the lift, or really even if you're working downward from, uh, um, well, from up top. You just make sure your finger's clean. I wouldn't uh, get it too nasty. Yes. Work your way in here. Hold your finger on it. And Hold your finger on it like that there. Stick her in the hole. Get right above and off you go. Stick it in the hole and once again we're doing one and a half. Squirt her in. So probably right about there now. Try not to get too much dirt inside your hole there. Actually don't get any dirt inside your hole. Never want dirt in your hole. So we got about another hundred to go. Jacob. Len's one of our elderly she <laughs> workers, so he gets cold. I say we're running money there, aren't you? That looks to me. So, all right, so. Here's your dipstick. do now? Here's your dipstick. Your won't. twin. My twin. Huh. So let's uh, <laughs> clean this off really good. Make sure we don't have any dirt around. Look at the dirt on this thing. because this thing goes places that most can't. Well, it's we'll work our way around that little wearing harness. Kind of sucks right there. See if we can bend it out of the way a little bit while that cap's on there. So we'll go down. Let me get in here and wipe some stuff off again. <laughs> now, all the truth. Mm 
this is just suspenseful. Uh, we don't got enough. See that, guys? Right there, in operating ranges. Hiski. Yeah, you don't need too much more. So that, uh, but that still, well, across the wide area, though, it's going to be um, a little concerned here, though. Well, there wasn't a lot that came out. Yeah. I would say about so one and a half liters. 1.5 liters. Yeah. Well, we're going to top it off. It's kind of concerning to me, but... Well, just put a little more in there and, and get the stick back in there. And Alright guys, we're going to come back to you when we get... Uh... Yeah, when we find out exactly how much this yeah, took. Yeah, we'll let you know. We'll let you know, because this is... Make sure that's the most important thing, get it right. Be back! All right, guys, so uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to grease these hubs. I've never done it. Uh, I've heard some nightmare stories. Some people on uh, YouTube, like zero grease in there to where some of them are just fine. So with the vials we got on here and the kind of water and mud that we've seen, it's definitely time to get in here and check it out. I've already done this on my X3. Uh, I did it right around two or 300 miles. Um, so I already have the, uh, the tool for the X3. Uh, and I'm guessing this all looks the same, and if k was smart, they would commonize their, their units. So Hopefully. I'm hoping this is the same one. So what we're going to do uh, is break this apart. We'll see what we got. So the first thing you got to do is get this, uh, get your brake caliper off. It does not want to. Uh, there she goes. Yep. Everything's got a little bit of that k yellow Loctite on it. Yeah, same as the... Same as the blue, they just got to do yellow. It's yeah. going to be different. <laughs> it's like the Yamaha coolant is blue. You know, see Yamaha cool. Good old yellow. It's got to be different. Always save your stuff, guys. Make sure you don't lose it. Right. It's also a good thing to do this every now and then because you can see the junk coming out of this caliper as I break it loose. You know, no matter how deep you are, yeah, no matter how deep you clean some of this stuff, it never really fully gets out of the Yeah, it's, the, uh, but I tell you parts. what, it's, it's pretty clean, really. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, so first look, get the caliper out, check right, our brake pads. Take a, take a look, up close look, uh, focus, here we go, oh man. So not too bad, that's just about stock. Um, you know, and it's really to be expected with this many miles. Uh, the big thing that we've noticed on the Defender's got such great engine braking that unless someone's like stopping in front of you, you come up to something that you weren't expecting, you are rarely using the brakes. I don't ever use the brakes. I know, and it's <laughs> one of those things. I mean, I do in the, uh, the X3 when I'm following Len around because he's kind of a slow driver. Well, not now. But, uh... You know what? <laughs> look out! Look over here. Does this look slow to you? Yeah. Oh, let's just pan. Well, hold on. We got a pan around this thing. Nice. <laughs> look at that. We got my rock blocks on. We'll we'll maybe yeah, check that out a little bit. Good. But anyway, I just had to show you that. So slow my ass. <laughs> All right. So, so. Uh, next step, once you get your uh, brake caliper out, I knew he'd have that on backwards for me. Yeah, uh, there's a cotter key that's in there. I already removed that. We may have to bring out the big dog. Who's on there? All right. Why don't you go grab the big dog? There's another one in there. It's got a lot more torque. Where's that at? Should be in that drawer. Oh, the Century Nevada one? Oh, yeah. yeah. This one? Yeah, that one's... Uh... 
Man, double right. hammer. Yeah, that one will get it off. That one won't get it off. Then we'll freezing cold. Put a four foot breaker bar on it. Hey, I was gonna. The hell, Leonard? Is it going the wrong way? There you go. Thing is, uh, we haven't even budged it. Woo, this thing's cold as ice. Well, we may have to put the bar on it. We'll just get breaker loose. That's a lot of pressure against the uh, park ball. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't. Gotta keep persistent. Yeah. You don't want to use too big an impact on that thing because uh, uh no. You don't wanna you know break everything. So that one's there we are, guys. This looks an awful lot like uh, the X3. And I'm guessing that after all that we're gonna need to go tappy tappy. Cause uh, tap tap tapper. Tap tap tap. She was in there. On the X3, they came right off. Uh, so lower, like, yeah. Keep it, going so. down. There's a there's a dead blow down there. Of course, I did it uh, 200 miles, and this one I've waited a little too long. I want to put a little fry fryage on there too. No, we're we're moving. We're moving. Well, you know, 2,000 miles of nothing but mud and dirt and... Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, guys, don't, don't beat the crap out of it if you're doing it because... You bend those castles over and you'll uh, you get yourself in trouble. Yeah, and I'm not really, guys, I'm no. just tapping. You just, can see how I'm choking up on this hammer. Yeah. And uh, just, there we go. So we're free. Little tappy tappy. Don't don't beat the crap out of it. And from what I'm seeing here, guys, this is a totally different setup. Well, that's else We'll give you a... Huh, that's interesting. Right, so it's got to be because of... Uh, they have a lot more here. So on an X3... This actually has a bearing surface built into it. So this actually rides in the bearings and the uh, uh, spline shaft itself actually rides only in the spline of this. So there's actually a place, as you can see in here, how there's a, there's a space between. Normally this slides on there on an X3 you're shaking like crazy, Lynn. Oh, that's cold. Uh, yeah. Normally this slides on there in an X3 and you can uh, pump grease into it. So that unfortunately uh, causes a lot larger maintenance issue here, guys, uh, for a Defender in my opinion, because now to do this, and I've seen the other tools, they don't have an open center like this. They're just like this, but without the open center. You know, and I wonder if we could still do it. No, that's a different diameter. No, it, so that's a sealed. So what you had to do was you'd have to break this, you have to take this apart, pull out your axle. Wait a minute, is that uh, is this a spacer? That's not the actual bearing, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's bearing. This is. Yeah, this whole thing. Hard to tell. It looks like a spacer. Yeah, the whole thing is moving. Bearing. So I don't know. Let me uh, set this down. Put her in. I think yeah. I left it in neutral. Well, it's the first time for us, so we're hopefully you'll learn with us because we want to figure out for the future if that's turn on the light. So, so yeah, there so yeah, go. that that's it's separated. We've got Gook in there.
Huh. I hate being this far and then not doing it. It sucks. So guys, it looks like this is a kind of a, a pain in the butt. Uh, really, uh, you'd have to now pull this bolt out on your top, pull your bottom one out, pull both your bottom ones out, remove this hub from the unit, grease it, put it all back together. Uh, so that we will catch you guys on for sure on a different video um, or perhaps a bearing replacement video because um, I'm not sure when we're going to get back to this. Yeah, I don't know. Uh... Yeah, it's a, just a definitely a, it's a heavier, dutier setup. I'm just, whoops, I'm just wondering if this isn't a spacer here and not the bearing itself. The spacer comes out because it's moving around a lot in there. When you were wiggling it up and down, it was all. Well, this surface was turning though, right? Because right here, this, this no. is your ceiling surface. This is rubber. All this right here is rubber. So this has oh, got to okay. be your bearing. Because yeah, it can't. Okay. Yeah, because that should be Oops. turning, right? Sorry. The spline's was... not turning inside that, right? That bearing's turning, isn't it? Oh, yeah, okay. Now we can see better. Alright. Now we can see. So, well... So anyways, uh, we won't be greasing these bearings until the next uh, maintenance video then on the Defender. At least this gave us a chance to uh, get a look at uh, the brakes and their wear. Uh, the axles I've been around, uh, they don't seem to have any wobble or wear in them uh, yet. Um, this spline looks great. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put this back together and uh, we will move on to the next uh, deal which was going to be the front diff. So we'll catch you guys when we're ready for that. All right, so right here guys, uh, it's very non-obvious, there's a teeny tiny plug, so you get your four mount bolts. In the center here, driver's side. Yeah. It's a five millimeter Allen. Okay, yeah, five millimeter. So yeah, just like a regular uh, cap, yep. like an uh, MPT cap, I'm guessing. Yeah. Bam. Where the hell did it go? Oh, it's right here, hooked. Oh uh, boy, you, you just here. grabbed it with your fingers. Look how nasty this oil is though. Yeah, it's a little... Why is this so nasty, Lynn? Uh, well... Fuck. There we go. Uh, right here. <sighs> yeah, it looks like it's got a little more metallic in it. Yeah, I get, I get it that it's a slipper system. Oh, oh yeah, that's why. Let me make one hell of a mess here. It's okay. I thought I had the right oh, here it is. That's what we do in garages. Alright, so we make this, messes. This is the tell all here. Yeah, oh there's nothing on there. It was kinda gooey. Yeah, but Oh yeah, it's just a goo, guys. It's not like it's it's like slight metallic clutch plate stuff. Yeah, it's that's absolutely one thousand percent normal. So yeah, let's see, guys. A little magnet in there yep. to catch your stuff, just in case yeah. you didn't know. All so normal. As you see, like I said, tiny, tiny plugs that don't lose it into your stuff. Don't uh, nothing yeah. silly. It's got an O-ring on it. Make sure you look over the O-ring before you put it back in there. Make sure you don't. A little nick or something in it, you know, because these are... Yeah, this one's going to be a little more difficult. It doesn't have like a top green plug or anything like we had on the rear. This one's got a side yeah. plug, so it's going to take some uh, some working uh, to get in there. It's yeah. kind of right down in there. Is there another one back here? You know what? It's hard to see. We can't, we're not going to be able to see it. We'll lower it. We'll lower the machine down on the hoist and see oh, if we can... definitely the only... Yeah, that's the only one on the other side. Point. Yeah. Oh, see, on this side. Now this is the uh, smart lock, because this is the XMR Defender. Um, but the Visco and the smart lock, same fluid, same basic method. 
It's not really much different between the two. It looks like we're already I'll give you a look, out. yeah. I'll give you a look at the bottom of it. Most people don't get to look at the bottom of their mowing machines most of the time. Now uh, this here I need to swap over. This is from the plow mount. Uh, in case you guys were wondering, this is what's really nice about this plow mount is it sits in flush with the bottom of the machine other than the fact they put these bolts in backwards. Yeah. So it grabs up here on these bars so you really have no um, no hindrance yeah, once you have that mount on. Which skid is plate's nice. nice and clean, look at that. Yeah, she doesn't really hit much. She's uh, so like it's she one, two, three, four, about four pieces, looks to me. Yeah, four pieces. One, two, three, yeah. four. Yeah. Okay. I know it. But... I'm guessing that's drained. Yeah, yeah put, not a whole lot, is there? No, you can put the plug back in and, yeah. and then we'll figure out how to get her full. Yeah. I know not everybody has a hoist. It's uh but let well, me tell you something. You know, uh, the good thing about it though is you know if you jack it up, if you or even if you don't have a jack, there's quite a bit of clearance. Quite a bit of clearance can, on it. You yeah. can work without too much of a problem. In my opinion. Well, so. you know, if any of you are on the fence about getting one, uh, a hoist, I'm, uh, this one I think I paid like 2400 out the door. That's uh, not bad at all. Best investment of a lifetime. Yeah. Uh, I, especially with me, I'm, you know, I've been doing this stuff for a long time, so to get on the floor anymore is kind of tough for me. Yeah. So. But well, we like it. Even for myself, I don't We know. like it. I used to enjoy wrenching on things, but like you said, getting on the ground. It just, uh, once you have a hoist, you won't want to get on the ground anymore. <laughs> Even right. for your buddies. So guys, don't over tighten this, you know. It's, yeah, it's an O-ring. It's an O-ring on it. It's not a high vibration part. Just give it a little snug. A little snuggy. Call it a day. So now, Give it Ryan pounds, which really? are not very many. Yeah. All right. Get this stuff out of the way. Coming down. Get her down to a reasonable level. Yeah, I'll tell you when. Try to figure out. Uh, Okay, that's probably good. Wouldn't mind getting the light over on that side. Here, I, I'll tell you what, I'll uh... Swing that over there, I'll bring the cord. I got my other light too, I can put that up there. This light might be bright enough, right? Maybe. Well... Yeah, okay. There we go. And let there be light. Well, we'll try to get a good angle for what you here. What the heck is it though? It's just flat. Am I missing something there, Lynn? I... Has it got a sticker over it or something? You know what I mean? Well, they're usually about halfway. They're halfway up a diff, you know, because that's usually your fill level. Yeah, there's a, there's a sticker on it. All right, I'm trying to see if I can get in here. Definitely bigger than this one. It's really hard it to here. see. Yeah. Yeah. Not What's worth taking that skid plate off. No, but, hell no. That's all. That's the whole front bulkhead there. Yeah, that's the whole bulkhead. No, I can get to it if. Yeah, you get. Uh, what size is this? Is this maybe an eight millimeter? That's a five that was on there. So. Or a five. So. Let me see if I can try to show you guys where it's at. Jeez, uh, Louise. Right. Oh goodness. There's just no 
Well, you can see it's kind of, hold on, and it's, I just had it. Yeah. Anyway, it's, for, for, it's blue. It's color-coded it's color blue in there. Um, well, here, you, come shoot right from here. Can and you I'll see it through there? Out. Okay. If I can get, I don't think That's I can right get in there. It's I can't. on my finger. I'll look right down. I can't get in there. You can't see? Huh? Let me see if... It's right where the tip of my finger is at. Oh, there we go. Okay, I got you now. Yep, right there. It's color, it's color cold and blue, so you'll be able to see it. Yeah. It's got like a sticker over it, uh, yep. like I think maybe yep. a quality control sticker. Oh, we're gonna have to do it with regular uh, Allen wrenches. Probably yeah, we got some in there. They right sure uh, don't make it easy on you. Not in the front one, anyway. Oh, it's bigger than this. Like, oh, wait a minute. I think oh, I got it right there. Oh. I don't know why you can't come in right on I, this angle and see it. I can see it now. Yeah. None of these freaking things are big enough. I'm trying Cameras. this one. Yeah, we're not focusing very well. Oh. Sorry, I don't mean your face, but I'm just. I don't know there what this is. Well, sorry guys, but anyway, it's blue. You'll see it. Right hand side toward the front. There we go. That's definitely the size. Oh. I just gotta find a way to. Well, get what size is it and get. Uh... You ain't getting no wrench in there. No, no, here. No, you won't get that in there well, either. Well, you can go from the side, put an extension on it. it. But I'm on an angle. The only reason why I'm in there right now is because this is a ball head. You've got a uh, crystal wrench with a hole in the other. Get her out. This will work. Hmm. You're like, what is this guy doing? Yeah. Uh, well, you need. Yeah, they go. make a long. There it is. They make a long uh, Allen style with a ball head. Would probably be the best. Yeah. Just go to Harbor Freight and get one for the much as you change. Oh yeah, now that we know what tools to use. Yeah, this that we gotta have. Oh you can kind of see it right there. There it is. Just turn it right there. There we go. And it's on another O-ring style. Let me try to show you guys, but it's in there tight. What size is this? You can see it right Eight millimeter. There. Eight millimeter. Eight millimeter. There it is, right there. Ryan put his fat hand in the way, but that's okay. <laughs> well, you know what they say, fat hands. All right, guys, well, there's your diff. Well, there it is, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's so good you can see, plug. they had it covered, so it's gonna, it's, it looks like a quality control cover to make sure that it was filled, to probably stamp it. So it's gonna look like it's nothing until you poke a hole in it, but it's eight millimeter. Yep. We'll go ahead and set that on our bench. Now, this is 7590 up front, guys, so we're going to switch over to uh, different oil. You do right about it. Wouldn't be the first time. Right, stick her in and fill her up till she comes out of the hole. Yeah, I can get it in there. Mm. Oh, well, it's the story of your life. There we go. So, yep, yeah. a little clear hose. Get that from Home Depot. Here. Right in from behind me, you can get a clear hole. Yeah, it's. I don't know why you can't see right through. I, well, I can. Uh, let's see. Mm. 
Yeah, I can. I can come all the way up here. There it is. There it is. Give us an injection. Right there. I can see it. It's starting to come up on it. It's in the hole. It's in the hole. Till it uh, she comes running out of there. Holy crap! Was there about yeah, ten gallons in there? Yeah, we should be getting there? close. Jeez. Yeah, it's cold in here. Oh, it doesn't flow very well in here. Well, I've got half this thing. Well, I'll be. What the hell? You can see how slow it's going in there, though. Yeah. With those bubbles. Who, mom? Getting tired. Hmm. <laughs> Holy crap! Oh, what? Just jazzed all over your floor, dude. Uh, again? <laughs> <laughs> again? Again, he says. <laughs> I never did that before, guys. <laughs> uh, well, it's... I got film. Man, we gotta be getting close. Gotta be getting close. There's a lot in there. What'd you say, 450 milliliters? Yeah, or 300 and some was all it was on. 350? Oh. Is it like... Hmm. Yeah. Where are we at here? I mean, I've got... Well, one, two, three. Yeah, we're almost there. We're close. Got a good angle on the. Got a good angle on the hole now. Good angle is important, especially when you're. Wrapping this in my arms are about <laughs> done. I'm telling you, at least I'm not shaking no more. Much. Holy crap! Gotta be close. There it comes. Yep. All right. All right, you can see it. I can see the level in there. Yep, you can see it. It's hope you can see it on camera. Oh yeah, a little bit. Yep. I wonder you don't see these videos online. Everybody just says, Yeah, I know we see it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's really not that bad, guys. If you got something no. to help you and a little bit of time and the right tools, which we kind of showed you, you know, uh, rags are one of them. I don't know where those all disappear to. <laughs> I know I gave you like two of them I already. Had a couple rags a minute ago. Jesus. So, the right tools, a little bit of patience. Yep. And yep. Uh, you can easily get this done. So we're up to the top. Now let me get my. Um, yeah, okay, we just got to put the plug back in, and I think that's going to do it for the maintenance on this bad boy. Yeah, we'll do a quick walk around, talk to you guys about some of the stuff. That's what we don't want to do because I don't want to put dirt into the freaking. <laughs> yeah. This is going to probably take me a few times. Don't want to do that. 
Yeah, the front diff was a little, uh, a little tricky, a little dirtier, but... a little dirty in the fluid, and a little trickier, but uh, a little perseverance. Of course, we have the luxury of having a lice again, but uh, it could be done. Maybe it's easier from the ground. I don't know, but yeah, I'm thinking no, I doubt it, but. I applaud you trying to make people feel better, but I don't appreciate well, it. Well, that's what I do. I make <laughs> I make people feel good. I lost my own wrench. Oh, we should should this we? This kind of stuff that really slows down a job, guys. Should we tell them about the ride right you here. got going on? All right, so yeah, uh, exactly one month of the day from right now, we have our first official Michigan Mudmasters ride. But it's also the fifth annual Break the Ice event. We're taking over uh, the Break the Ice event from uh, Chris Babcock uh, and uh, the Michigan Side by Side Club. Yep, Michigan Side by Side Club. And uh, so this year we're going to put it on. Um, it is April 6th. So like I said, exactly one month to the day from today. Uh, we're going to be there by 10 a.m. Or sooner, probably sooner. Yeah, or a little sooner. I want to leave. I want to be uh, heading down the road by uh, 1030, or on the trail by 1030. So if you're there by 10 at the latest, you know, that should be okay. Yep, join, um, uh, join the Michigan Side-by-Side -side Club, and it'll be on there. But uh, also our Facebook page, it's on there. Yep. Um, it's up in St. Helen. Be the parking lot across from the airport. Yeah, anybody, we, anybody local that's been to St. Helen will know where it's at. But if you're coming from anywhere else, you know you can look it up or message us. We'll. Yeah, like I said, uh, you can go to uh, mimudmasters at gmail.com. Shoot me an uh, email, and I'll uh, get you any kind of information that you need. Um, we're going to be heading from St. Helen. And shooting out uh, to the uh, sand pit for a little while, a couple other stops along the way. We'll do lunch along the way, so we'll pack a lunch. Uh, then uh, we're going to make it all the way to Prudenville. And uh, once we're in Prudenville, we'll stop. We'll see what everybody needs. If we need to go to the Wally Mart or something like that or whatever, we will. Check out the ice real quick, and then we'll turn around and head back to uh, St. Helen for the end of the day. Hopefully we'll be back by 5.30, 6 o'clock. So that's our first ride. Uh, second ride, we're going to be up with the Michigan Treadheads, uh, April 20th. Uh, that's going to be out of Indian River. Uh, if you want more information on that, I'll get you that as well. Uh, those are a pretty good group of guys. Uh, we enjoy riding with them. We started off our year last year with them, uh, but didn't really have a lot of time uh, throughout the year to join their ride. So we try to start off the year with them. Um, so we'll be there April 21st, uh, then May 4th is going to take us to the side-by-side -side blog drags. We'll be there for our third time. Uh, we'll be taking, uh, of course, the Defender just to get us around. Take my X3, we'll take Lens uh, XRS, and then hopefully the new Maverick uh, XRC that we'll be getting uh, uh, first week of April, roughly. So. That's the plans going forward. Other than that, uh, looks like we've got this wrapped up for our uh, maintenance. Uh, we'll go around real quick. Um, 2,000 miles so you can see tire wear, not bad. I uh, haven't even gotten into the, you know, into the cuts here. There's some little wear on the uh, traction side, but uh, nothing too bad. Um, brakes were good, we had them apart. Uh, no, Plenty of pad, almost looked like it was the stock brand new pad. Um, rear, rear tires, same thing. Um, for the amount of miles, I was really worried that uh, I was gonna have to replace these tires uh, more often than um, it uh, appears. Uh, barely any wear, so that's great. Um, just general wear and tear on the machine. You know, I try to keep it clean, but as you can see, it's pretty dirty right now. Uh, the powder quartz holding up pretty good after one year. Uh, and all these miles, we're running a lot of stone and sand. Yeah. A lot of crap, a lot of gritty stuff. So uh, a lot of people are commenting on they don't like the rear of the Defender sagging. Uh, the way I've gotten around that is I run the rear on the high setting, and I run the front on the number two setting, the mid setting, and it leveled it right out. 
I mean, you guys gotta have it as high as possible, but I just I just don't find it necessary. No. Um, other than that, it's about it. Uh, you know, you guys already know about all the accessories, uh, the lights that I installed. You know, we did the uh, LED low beams, the HID high beams. Uh, we're on about six, seven months of those now, and uh, flawless, no issues. That was an easy upgrade, and uh, I think a very inexpensive way to get some much-needed light out of these things without, without having to put the uh, upper LED light on. And then that also affects you a lot of ways for height. Uh, if I had that upper LED light on, I'd never get it in the uh, enclosed trailer. So that helps. Um, other than that, I, you know, the thing's been great. Uh, one oil change uh, did fine. So we're getting close on that. Um, you know, the only thing we could go in and do is look at the uh, air filter. I don't think that's ever been out of here. But, oh, that might be a good idea. Yeah, we can do that from the ground. We'll lower it down, put it on the ground for that. Yeah, we might have to split this into two videos, so. Yeah. But uh, other than that, uh, it's been great. Uh, if you guys have any other questions for me, like I said, uh, just comment below or shoot us an email. Uh, please, you know, help us uh, get to 1,000 subscribers. If you guys are new, checking us out because you were curious about the Defender uh, dip changes or anything else that we went through today, you know, subscribe to us. This is what we're doing all the time. Um, you know, 1,000 is the magic number before we start getting any type of support. So uh, once we get there, that'll allow us to, you know, do more of this for you guys uh, than we're already doing. So thanks for uh, our current supporters, and thank you for our new ones uh, coming. And uh, we hope to see you guys on the trail uh, this year sometime. So. Yeah, and if you got questions, comments, something you want to see, something we can do, let us know. We'll do it. Well, you know, we'll do some things short of some things, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll do whatever, you know, if you want to see something or just let us know. But uh, next, I think we're going to, next big project's going to be the XRS. Uh, I'm going to pull all the gold off of it, and we're going to paint it black and put some decals on it, so stay tuned for that. And please comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff.